wanted to meet you, Miss Gordon. I have all your records. Oh, it's always nice to meet a fan, but you shouldn't have gone to all this trouble. Well, it's no trouble at all. I mean, my brother's song is going to be published. Here, here. <laughs> I think you're being railroaded, Miss Gordon. Oh, please call me June. And I'm not being railroaded. I really adore the song. Well, how about a toast? To Mark. To a smash hit. Number one on the charts. Oh, brother. Yeah, come on, drink it up. <laughs> oh, please, and have another hors d'oeuvre. They have crab meat filling. Oh, they're marvelous. <clears throat> Did you make them? Oh, yeah, I love to cook. Mmm, delicious. You have a stunning apartment. Yes, yes, it's nice, isn't it? And a fabulous view. Yeah, well, New York at our feet. <laughs> Just as it should be. <laughs> well, yeah, let's drink to that. Speaking of stunning, you look terrific. Oh, thanks. I you, tried. You, you've Very become a, a butterfly. <laughs> well, Mark, I couldn't stay in my cocoon forever. Well, I'm glad you finally realized it. Mm. You must take these away. I'm hooked on them. Oh, good. <laughs> June, tell me, how, how did you come to, to know Ken? We met at a nightclub opening a very long time ago. Yeah, she was with some uh, UN type, and I absolutely insisted on meeting her. And we've been friends ever since. That's right. Lucky for Mark. And lucky for me. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to see your show, Mark. Well, you didn't have much of a chance. It opened and closed the same night. But it was wonderful. The audience loved it, especially your songs. I'd love to hear the entire score. Do you happen to have a tape of it? Uh, yes, I do. I'll be happy to get you one. It's too bad Erica doesn't have a piano here. <laughs> Ken tells me you play beautifully. Ken should be my agent. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world is going on? Oh, Erica! What are you doing here? Well, Ken, I might ask you the same question. XWTV on TV. Talking about a, a richer arrangement. I thought perhaps. Mr. Silver, I think we could use some more hot coffee. Rhythmic. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. Where are you going? Take the dirty dishes to the kitchen. But it's all just to make a little more commercial. Yes, sir. Against the song, of course, Mark. And he mentioned some overdubbing for harmony, too. Mark, I'm just so happy for you, and I'm just so proud of you. June, I couldn't be happy about this for my brother, Mark. I mean, I am his biggest fan. I think he's he's really always been the one with the real talent. I mean, musically. <laughs> well, I'd say the three of you are very gifted. Your sister could open her own restaurant the way she cooks. What a <laughs> dinner. <laughs> well, she does rather well. <laughs> and your modeling work? You're a symbol of beauty all over the world. Oh, well, thank you. Of course, I'm not unsung totally in my own country. Oh, darling, I wish you could have seen the way I was mobbed on this PR tour. I mean, it was amazing. I had police barricades everywhere I went. Isn't that always so? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but enough about me. This is Mark's celebration. Oh, I'm so proud of you. And you know something, this is a big coincidence because I was planning to get Kent to, to find some connections for, for Mark just the minute I got back from my trip. Uh, well, I, I appreciate the backing of all of you, believe me. <laughs> Would anyone like some dessert? Oh, not for me, Silver. I really must be going. Oh, I think I'll second that. Uh. Silver Coats. Mark, I'm yes, anxious Erica. to get started on the new arrangement for your song. Um, would you like to come back to my apartment with me? I have a piano there, and perhaps we could bat it around a little. Well, there's nothing I'd like better. As a matter of fact, I'd be more than happy to sit and play the whole score through. That is, you think you can hear it. That's exactly <laughs> what I was hoping you'd say. We may be excused. Of course. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> there you go. It's been a delightful evening. Thank you, Kent. And a pleasure oh. meeting you, Erica. I've been an admirer of yours for years. Well, thank you. How nice of you. Silver, thanks for everything. Oh, you're welcome. The Got dinner it? was great. Oh. I should say so. Absolute perfection. Well, it was such a pleasure to meet you, Miss Gordon. Oh, June, please. Oh, sure. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, take care. Good night, Eric. Thanks again. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night Ken. Good night. Silver, how dare you? What? How dare you take over my apartment and give a dinner party in my home in my absence? Oh, come on, Eric. Listen. Now, you stay out of this, Kent. I had it up to here with my pushy little sister. And this time you have gone too far. Do you understand that? Now you get in there and you clean up your mess. How in the world did that happen? Well, June Gordon, the music publisher, heard one of the songs and she played it for Melba Moore. 
She liked it so much that she decided she might use it in her act. I can't believe it. That's like a fantasy. It's wonderful. Which song is it? Uh, easy to say, hard to do. It's from my show. Oh, I want to hear it sometime. Well, you just happen to be in luck because I have a cassette right here. I thought it hadn't been recorded yet. Well, uh, June did this one. She used to sing herself, and, and so she made this demo tape. Well, don't just sit there. Play it. <laughs> this is exciting. Every once in a while Oh, I like every light and again You meet someone who feels the way you do Someone who feels all your pain And before you can speak You are floating on air Needing more than you did before needing to give and to share easy to say hard to do day after day waiting for you I'm a dreamer I'm a fool who won't give up on you Now I know where I'm at Cause I know what is true You'll come back to me We were meant to be Can you hear me? I love you Easy to say It's really terrific Makes you think of Ellen, doesn't it? I don't need a song to think about it. To meet you, Miss Gordon. Nice to meet you, too. And please, make that June. Oh, okay. Marcus told me all about how you've helped him meet Melba Moore. He's so excited about his song. And so am I. Oh, well, listen, would you join us for lunch? I'd love to, but I've got to run. I really just came by to ask if we can postpone that meeting till four. Oh, sure, no problem. Melba got hung up at her agent's. Ah, uh, uh, same place? Same place, her suite at the Royal Plaza. Okay, well, I'll see you then, I guess. So long. <laughs> Take care. Take care, Jim. Think we can wait another two hours? Well, if you see me climbing the walls, you know I can't. Can I get you something? Uh, not just yet, Francois. I think maybe, maybe a little later. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Mark. Erica. Hi. Hi. Silver. Hi, Mark. Hi. How are you? Okay. Oh, listen, I want you to meet somebody. Brooke, this is Silver Kane, my other sister. Silver, this is Brooke Cuddy. Hi, Brooke. It's very nice to meet you. Well, hi, Silver. It's nice to meet you, too, uh, Excuse Eric. me, if I may get a word in here, edgewise. I have a bone to pick with you, Mrs. Cuddy. Is that what you're calling yourself these days? Problem now, Erica. Uh, as if you didn't know. No, I don't know, and I'm not in the mood to play guessing games. I am talking about the fact that you went running to Audrey Wilson about my engagement to Kent. You just couldn't resist the chance to get a scoop, could you? What? Oh, cut the innocent act. I know all about it. Believe me, Erica, I have a lot more important things on my mind than spreading gossip about your umpteenth engagement. Oh, please, little snoop like you wouldn't would do anything to get a, <laughs> uh, ahead in your career. You really think a trivial, excuse me, little item like that is trivial. going to do anything to further my trivial. career? Trivial? I am an American beauty. My engagement is front page material. Really? Well, then you should be used to seeing your name in print, shouldn't you? Why are you in such a snip? Erica, you know, it might be nice if we got another... Silver, be quiet. Marriage happens to be a very private matter. I will not tolerate this invasion of my privacy. Look, I really don't see what difference it makes. I mean, you and Kent are going to be married and you're going to be happy forever after, right? Right, of course. Well, we're all very happy about that. Aren't we, Silver? <clears throat> Beyond words. There, you see? By the by, where is your fiancé? Well, he's working. 
But look at this. Oh, 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 that's nice. <laughs> but you know, I... What, but what? Uh, no, nothing. Mark, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say it sort of looks like the ring that Brandon gave you, doesn't it? Mark, don't be silly. Well, I, I mean, really, I, I, I can't tell the difference. Well, it's because you're not a connoisseur. No. But really, Mark, this ring is much more tasteful. This is much more desirable. I mean, not to mention a lot larger. Look, Brooke. Oh, very nice. <laughs> I, no, you can't go by me. I think one diamond looks the same as the next. <laughs> uh -huh. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. You mean you hadn't even seen it? Well, I'm sorry. I've had other things to do besides reading Audrey Wilson's gossip column. Mark, this is about me. That is a deliberate slap in the face. Oh, I don't see why. I mean, really, she printed a perfectly respectable retraction about your... Well, engagement. And she implied that it was because of another woman, and all the while the other woman was only silver. What do you mean, only silver? Come on, come on. The only reason that Kent took silver to Nexus last night was because he felt sorry for her. I think mean, Kent could never in a million years be attracted to anybody like our plain Jane little sister. Well, then what's the worry? Why don't you just call Audrey and then tell her that? Well, you don't care at all about my reputation, do you? <laughs> Your reputation is doing just fine. You're the biggest, most glamorous model in the business. I mean, soon you're going on a world tour to shoot a whole new slew of commercials. You haven't got a problem in the universe. And I suppose you have. Oh, boy, do I. You know that meeting June set up with Melba Moore about recording my song? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's been indefinitely canceled. But, Mark, that doesn't mean that she's not still interested. <laughs> That's just the beginning. Not the worst of it. Why, what else? How's punching Loris Bogart out for starters? You... you didn't! Oh, yes, I did. I afraid I really screwed things up with Ellen. Mark, what could possibly have come over you? What possessed you to do that? Well, I... I found out he wanted to take her down to some romantic island, so I went over to his apartment and told him to lay off my wife. Mark, you had no right to do that. What do you mean? I had every right to do that. He's just trying to put the make on her. Listen, even if he if he was, I mean, it's none of your business anymore what Ellen does. It's none of my business. We are still married, all, with, whether we're living together or not. Now, well, when you were married and living with her, you took up with Pamela. Well, all right, so I was a fool. Just more of my typical childish behavior, as Ellen called it. Well, it was childish. Did you, uh, did you hurt him badly? I clocked him good in the jaw, I'll tell you oh, that. Oh, no. Probably sore for a couple of days. Mark, how could you do that? You know this reflects on me. You? Yes. He's my boss. He can call me on the carpet for Erica, what he did. How could you think of you? What about me? How about how this reflects on my marriage? Well, Mark, I wouldn't really think this would be too good for your marriage. I should have known better than to come to you for sympathy. I am sympathetic. You know how many times I've tried to help you, and Ellen, why don't you call Ellen and ask her right now? I can't, now. I can't. I haven't got the guts for it. Probably hang up in my face. Oh, you know something, Mark? You're your own worst enemy. Well, thanks for the encouragement. She's probably packing for the Caribbean right now. Oh, don't be such a pessimist. At least you have your career. I have nothing. I don't even have a prayer. Excuse me. Hello? My goodness. Who are you mad at? Who is this? It's June. With a little good news, if you think you can handle it. <laughs> you bet I could take some good news. In fact, there's nothing I need more right now. Okay, here it is. I just heard from Melba Moore. She's finished her gig in Atlantic City, and she'll be performing here in New York tonight at a private club called Nexus. Do you know it? Yeah, I know it. My sister goes there all the time. Well, it's the new in place, and Melba's agreed to introduce your song there tonight. This is great news! Her arranger's uh, uh, Lawrence Jones, one of the best in the business. 
But, Mark, I really think that you and I will have to get together uh, with Melba here in my office sometime this afternoon just to go over the song. Can you uh, make it? <laughs> Can I? <laughs> you just tell me when. Well, I won't be free till around 5 o'clock. Is that okay with you? Yeah, 5 o'clock's fine with me. And, uh, thanks. Thanks a million, Judah. You don't know what this means to me. Well, it's a really good showcase, Mark. It could be the beginning. Oh, I sure hope so. I'm due for a change of luck. All right, well, then I'll, I'll see you about 5. Right. Bye. Thanks, Judah. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, little sister! Oh, sister, we're on our way! <laughs> Once in a while, every life and again, you meet someone who feels the way you do, someone who feels all your pain. And before you can speak, you are floating on Yes, Alice. Send them right in. Mark! You're right on time. Uh, where's Miss Moore? Uh, Melba just called. She's running a little late. But she's coming, isn't she? Of course she's coming. Sit down. Sit down. Stop looking so nervous. Can't help it. Uh, I can't believe she's going to be singing my song at Nexus tonight. Well, maybe this will help. Take a look. What is it? I hope you recognize some of those names. Looks like the who's who of the music business. That's the list of the people who are coming tonight. It's Nexus? Look, we've reserved five tables. And Mark, I want you to make it your business to get around and say hello to everybody. Me? Yes, you. Now, you're not worried about anything, are you? Who, me? Worried? I'm telling you, when Melba starts to sing your song, Easy to Say, Hard to Do, all your worries will begin to disappear. You seem pretty confident. You really think she might want to record it? Well, we're working on it. It's all a question of whether the song fits in with the theme of her latest album. So we'll just wait it out and see what happens. Excuse me. Yes, Alice? Yes, of course. Send her right in. She's here. She's here. June, she's here. <coughs> June? Melvin, darling, how are you? Oh, how are you doing? doing? Marvelous. So <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> Melba, I want you to meet Mark Dalton. Mark, this of course. This is Melba Moore. Hi, how do you do? It's a it's a great honor to meet you. <laughs> well, you're the composer. Well, I I really love your song. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Listen, I I have your last album at home. I think it's true. You may as well know I'm a big fan. <laughs> well, believe me, it's mutual. much better. Okay, good. What about the tempo? Tempo? Tempo's pretty good. Do you think so, Mark? Yeah, maybe just a little bit faster. A little okay. half faster. Okay. okay. Why don't we take it at that break just before the chorus? Okay, right here. Okay. okay. Three, four. people tonight to agree with us. They will, I'm sure of it. Uh, I've never played Nexus before. I hope it's a friendly group. Well, I know of at least two friendly faces. Both of my sisters are showing up, and I think they're bringing friends. <laughs> <laughs> He's packing the place. That's great. <laughs> the song is very important to Mark. Well, I promise you, I'm going to give it my very best shot. I don't... I can't... Would you dare? I can't miss. I can't miss. <laughs> Thank you, babe. <laughs> 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride and pleasure that we present the one and only Miss Melba Moore.
Separated. No, it's all right. Really, I'm a great admirer of Mark's work. Mark! I've been talking to some very important record producers. They love your song. Oh! oh. <laughs> I oh, really? I told you! <laughs> so come with me. I want you to meet them. Excuse us, please. Oh, thanks. Eric, I'll see you okay. later. You were just terrific. <laughs> now, Silver, Kent and I are going directly to his apartment when we leave here. I know that, Erica. Well, I don't want you tagging along. <clears throat> Do you understand that? I understand it perfectly, but I still think you're making a big mistake. Well, I'm not really very interested in what you think. Well, it won't work, Erica. Erica, just because you get yourself pregnant doesn't mean he's going to marry you. Shut up. You're going to be left out in the cold. Oh, I am sorry I ever confided in you to begin with. Oh, you too. Would you like to uh, join us in some champagne in honor of Melba Moore here? Oh, thank you. Uh, I'll just be right back, darling. Sure. <laughs> Ellen? Yes. Oh, excuse me, Arthur. Yes, Ellen. I can't believe what I hear about you and Mark. Well, what do you hear? That you two are leaving tomorrow morning for a romantic island in the Caribbean? That's right. You're still married to Mark. Right again. Well, then how can you hurt him like that? Oh, he doesn't look too hurt to me, Erica. Aren't you watching him? He looked at you throughout the entire time that Melba Moore was singing his song. You know he wrote that song for you. Erica, you are batting a thousand tonight. You are right again. And you know that he still loves you. And you are flaunting his love in his face by sleeping with another man. <laughs> Erica, you're a great one to talk about morality. The way you chased Brandon Kingsley around until you got him in bed. That was entirely different. How? He's a married man with two children. And a wife who wouldn't give no, him no, freedom. No, 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 come off it, Erica. When it comes to men, you absolutely have no scruples, and you are in no position to criticize me. Well, I will say one thing for me. Hmm? At least I never behave like some cheap, common twang. <laughs> Please, would you please get what, home? What, uh, yes, of course. Thank you. Excuse us. Excuse us. I'm sorry. What, a lovely meeting in the You're not saying what you No, I'm sorry, Kent. We can't. Come sure. Mary's losing her sight, but she doesn't know it will be for good. Little House on the Prairie at 4.30 on WTVN-TV, Columbus 6. Two of the jurors. 